Hey, and welcome to the Reset Podcast. Everything you need to know that your therapist probably never told you. Researched by experts, real life experiences. This is Reset. Hey, and welcome back. We are continuing talking about perfectionism today. We're going to give you some tools that Joe tells his clients and some tools that I've worked on just struggling with perfectionism myself. Well, and let's go through a variety of strategies because not yeah. everything fits for one person. So I don't let's know your do it. yeah, I don't know your personality type. I don't know, you know, your situation, things like that. So I think it's always good to give a variety, right? And give it opportunities. So everything that that I'm gonna bring up, it's not necessarily might not be right for you, but maybe the next one is. Okay. And maybe you're that person, you're so perfectionism that you want to do all of them, right? That's and that's the case. Counterintuitive. Yes. I, mean, not counterintuitive. Uh, I don't know what's that. That is word. not what we want. Yes. Th- that case, we're not <laughs> helping you, we're, we're hurting you. Okay. But I think the first thing is, the first, I would say, strategy or advice I would get, I give clients is give yourself permission to make mistakes. I know we hear this a lot. You got to give yourself permission. Literally, you tell yourself, you know, I'm giving myself permission to be put in this position to make a mistake or to not do this ideally or perfectly. Because right? like we tell our children, you don't lose, you learn. Right. Right. And it's, you know, we, that's even our mantra with sports, right? We don't we don't lose, we learn. Like if, if this is an opportunity to learn, the price of that is, is just priceless, right? And so just getting, going into things, giving yourself permission to make mistakes, that there has to be growth and then that is really, is really important. You know, I often think about uh, there's a story about um, Bill Gates back in the day when Microsoft was starting, and one of his employees uh, made like a two million dollar mistake, and so they said to him in this article, you know, "Did you, did you fire him?" And he said, "He said no. That that employee has a two million dollar lesson and is more valuable than anyone wow. else." And so I think perspective of that you know makes sense. I think something that I've had to learn is developing this healthy relationship with myself and my performance self and redefining really um, what what is healthy and what makes me happy and brings me joy because like we were talking about, I didn't realize I was trying to hit this perfect mark, but we would place that perfect mark or that ideal self with um, – these things of like, I think this, I believe this, right? I used to do a lot of that. I have tos, I ought tos. If I don't do this, then, you know, and just realizing I am who I am. You realizing you are who you are. We have limitations, but we also have strengths and just seeing yourself more positively, seeing yourself for what you can give and knowing that we just like the other one we just said before, like I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to grow and learn and I might trip because I'm not, I'm still kind of like a little like weird and crazy, but I'm not that self anymore that put up, puts up that defense mechanism. Well, and that's right. I think that's a great strategy too, is trying to develop that healthy relationship with the performance self or that performance is in. Right. Yeah. And I also think about how studies are shown about switch like diagnosis when you put a name like to the problem issue. So for example, let's say you're, you're someone with anxiety, let's say, you know, we're going to name your anxiety, Bobby, you know, like, are you being kind of Bobby today? Silencio. Yes. Bruno. Yeah. We don't talk about Bruno here. And so, you know, that is something that we, that has been, it's a great like little tip because we found out is if you see, let's say your problem, your issue or, or trouble self as a person, you can pick yourself more grace. You're kind. You see as like a, like a friend, like how would you treat a friend? Right. And so that is a great way to, you know, give yourself an opportunity to learn to have a healthy relationship, have a healthy self talk around it. And it's a good way to remove yourself from the, say the worry of the anxiety of what it may be. Right. And so with that distance gives perspective. I always say that in life. And so it gives that little distance to say, okay, how should I treat myself? How do I be kind of myself? How do I develop a mindset that would be healthy or a healthy relationship with who I am when it comes to this performance of what's going on? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Another strategy is that challenge your thoughts. Not everything you think is right. What? Yes. Learn. Listen to yourself and learn to say, no, that's not right. I Start don't Start talking think so. to yourself. Stop listening to yourself. Right? I like that. So, yeah, that's something I've learned is stop listening to the thoughts. If especially They might be right. They might be wrong. But listen to them. 
and then talk back to them whether it's yeah that is an awesome thought yeah or talk back to them like absolutely not that is inappropriate bobby well, bruno the, we don't talk about bruno i told you about that's that right, sorry. so i will tell you that's an interesting statement because i think every one of us has to find the right voice in our head and we would say like a perfectionist voice, you know, Freud would say it's like a super ego voice, right? Freud. Oh, Freud. Freud, yeah, or old school boy, um, is would say that's, that's ego. You have overriding ego that's really – super ego that's really loud, right? And so we all have this these voices in our head per se, right? And But mainly we have two. We have like an inner coach and an inner critic, right? Some say inner bully, right? Whatever you want to say. And I would say is, is that the perfectionist mindset – is one that listens to the inner critic, inner bully way too much, and it's too loud. And so part of this, like you're saying, you got to learn to listen to the right voice. you got to find that voice, right? A lot of us, we have a hard time. Some people are just naturally born just being optimistic and have and hearing that like voice. You. Absolutely. And so when it comes to that, it's not as hard for them, right? But then when you do have, let's say, an overriding critic. Like me. You had to speak back to that. Yes. Fight it. Like, in, like literally in yes. your mind. That's why I want to encourage people is this does take work, um, but it can be done. And don't be – I don't want people to feel like, how do I ever get to that point? It's just a lot of discipline, a lot of you, – you're, you're rewiring the way you think. And I probably talk back to my thoughts, like you're saying, way more every day than you are because you do naturally think more positively. And that's just the way you were created. And I celebrate that. Right. And I think that – like here's a little tip with that. You ready for it? Yeah. Is – just keep your self-talk around two sentences, I will and I am, right? Let's say it's like around, you know, basketball tryout. I will try my best at basketball tryout. I am going to go out there and do my best. I will outsweat the competition. I am going to put myself in a position to try to be on a team. I will enjoy the process like i am and i will statements a lot of times will put you in that right mindset if you kind of stick into that mm -hmm. and if you struggle with it tremendously then write it out every day Ooh, you're gonna talk about journaling aren't you you know this is what i i preach this i believe in it i do it and studies keep showing it works is j just spend time every day give us a realistic amount of time oh one percent of your day 14 minutes you, you spend 1% of your day, 14 minutes before noon, wake up, prime your day, write out your thoughts, write out your feelings, write out what you want to do for the day, all right? Name it, claim it type of stuff. And we'll do a whole nother podcast on journal. 100% because we really – this is something that we really teach people to do. I mean, it's, it's by far probably the top strategy that we teach people that say they get results on. And even when men fight it, who yeah. should they always like to fight it, right? The old pen and paper, they fight it, but they start doing it, and then we get the text. Then we get the Marco Polo. Then we get the <laughs> phone call saying, it's happening. I'm feeling it. I'm like, yep, it works. So this is something that I've loved doing as well to combat perfectionism, and it's learning to celebrate the decisions of the day, not the results. So little things – well – they're big in my mind, but sometimes they can feel little. Showing up to work out and work on my body because I know it's good for my body physically, good for my mental health. And even I love the, the girls that I work out to. They're like, you showed up. That's part – like you're here. So I do. I say I made the decision to get up early and work out. I'm so proud of myself. I also despise making phone calls. I don't know what it is. I actually do. It's probably my brain. Um, so when I make that call or, you know, I um, – just make that decision to go somewhere that's really difficult for me. Or even, this is going to sound even silly, putting that load of laundry in, then putting it in the dryer, then folding it. I'm like, I I actually feel like on top of the world when that happens. I did all three steps. But that's, those are, I remember you always have told me this, Joe, is it's the breadcrumbs of life. It's those little things that if you're encouraging yourself and talking to yourself and telling yourself all day, like, you got this, you did great, I'm so proud of you, you did this, then by the end of the day, you're going to feel so accomplished. Even for me, if it was just making, making my kids lunch, doing laundry, and getting up early. I feel so proud of myself for making those decisions because some people don't even make that decision to get up early to maybe work out or journal. You know? Well, I think about it. I mean, it is true. The breadcrumbs of life matter. And and sometimes we, ne we neglect them. I think about some breadcrumbs that some people struggle with and the results are is they don't go well. It doesn't do well. 
it's small things like what? Like, well, flossing your teeth sounds weird, but true. Yeah. Um, I know I was on a podcast before with this uh, like biologist or, or bio guy, and he talked about just chewing your food as the first step of digestion. Hmm. And we don't chew it correctly or well, whatever it may be. Because we're always in a hurry. That it actually results hmm. in cortisol release stress hormones are being released it puts stress on our body immediately when we swallow food and we don't chew it correctly that's great and so you think about like that's a breadcrumb we probably don't do well enough but see the breadcrumbs do matter breadcrumbs matter when it comes to confidence everyone's wanting more confidence what do you do well what's breadcrumbs that matter is waking up every day at the same time or if it's doing your 14 minutes of journaling right or if it's you know making sure that you know you give yourself enough water every day, things like that, right? But it helps out with motivation. It helps out with confidence. It's the breadcrumbs. We always want the big loaf, <laughs> but it's the breadcrumbs when it comes to yeah. it. And I think deciding it, saying yes to it, that's what needs to be celebrated. It's the decisions that need to be that needs to be celebrated in our mind, in our head, right? That matter. not the results. Because remember, perfection. Go back to perfection is result oriented. Right. Correct. And so this is what we're talking about. We're talking more about the aspect of celebrating decisions, decisions, process, 100 percent, which kind of goes like to my next strategy, the aspect of you have to shift your mindset from one being result oriented, right? Scoreboard oriented in life. Right. And you have to shift it to process or system oriented, enjoying the process, recognizing the process is where it's is where the fun is. I always think about mountains. You know, we could where we used to live, there's a mountain that my buddies and I used to climb and it's about six hours to the top. It's tiring. It's exhausting. Right. And you get to the top of it and it's just bare. There's <laughs> nothing up there. It's just gravel. Uh, and, and not a lot of life. Not a lot of life. Just, there's no growth going on there. There's no trees. There's no bushes there's no like there's nothing there but then we look behind us and see how far we travel miles up this up these you know valleys and ravine and the guess what's there it's all the growth right all the trees all the bushes right mountain lions all that good stuff right and so you recognize right that the growth was actually in the process of getting up there and i think that's just a metaphor of life right is that it's just in the process processes that was that valley we had to climb through to get to the top and that's where the true growth occurs and by the way it's also where we talked a lot on the way we tell stories that's where the intimacy was for us climbing that mountain when we got to the top it was like how are we getting back down this seems... <laughs> we have to go six hours down and no one told us it's this cold up there yeah well, yeah well you went yeah. really high where yes. there's no life yes i love that visual i'm such a visual learner such a I think in metaphors, analogies, and all the things. So that is a great picture to think. And you always say, too, we need to trust more and try less. And that is also a way to get out of that perfectionist mindset. Yeah. That actually comes from uh, Donnie on him. He used to be a, a coach for the Olympics in the 80s, I believe. And I remember reading a quote from him. And he said, the, the thing I give – he was a mindset coach for the, for athletes for Olympics. And he said, I think he said the top advice I give athletes is try less, trust more, trust more who you are, trust more of the process. Trust. The fact is, is that you have people around you support you trust that you have the ability to recover if you need to. And I just thought that's great. That's beautiful. This is the part of our show where we talk about our opinions on the things that we observe. Observe and then respond and worry you cannot be wrong. It's all about the way that your mind works. Observation feedback. Today we are going to be talking about wolves. What can we learn from wolves? Well, it's going to be a lot less about the wolf in the story, so I just want to give a warning to some animal lovers out there. Just, just try to... Just listen to the moral of the story here. Yes, okay? and this is for survival. Just yes. know this. So Eskimos have an interesting way to kill wolves. So what happens is is that wolves will come in and, and they will attack and, and eat their livestock, right? And so they have to be creative in, in how do we stop a wolf or wolves. And so what they do is they, they take a knife, they dip it in, in seal blood, and they freeze it, 
overnight. They dip it again, freeze it, dip it again, freeze it. So you have this thick layer of seal blood uh, on the knife. And so what they do is, is on their land, they put the knife with the blade up. Don't you call this a blood popsicle? It's a blood popsicle. And so what happens is, is the wolf comes and smells it and starts licking it. And it starts licking it, and they know that the right amount of layers of blood it needs to actually numb the wolf's tongue. And so when the wolf gets to the wolf gets to the blade, it cuts it, its tongue, right? And it has a taste of fresh blood. So guess what it does? It keeps going. It keeps going because it's numb to a point where the, bl- the wolf basically bleeds out. And you might be thinking, what's the moral of this? Like, what's the point of this? Well, it's a lot like our lives where we could get into a negative routine or unhealthy relationship and we start small and slow to a point in which we even get maybe a little numb. And when we get numb, we keep going more and more and more and more until it's too late. Either we're in a codependent, abusive relationship or the habits that we created, right? Negative habits, unhealthy habits now become part of our identity. And the point of it is if you do something long enough, right, and it might not be something that's right or healthy or even good for us, right, if you do long enough, you might be numb to this consequences. You might get numb to the negative reactions from it and just becomes our norm. You think a lot about with addiction and not just, I would say, you know, uh, uh, chemical addiction, but just think about addiction, behavioral addiction, like pornography or addicted to uh you know, video games shopping. or shopping or when it comes to, you know, like social media with the social validation cycle, right? That you start it, right? And then what happens is, like you think about pornography, you start with something that is minimal pornography, right? What you're watching, what you're seeing and how much and you work away. If you get numb to that and then you go to the next level and the next level, and the next level where you're into this grotesque, right? Pornography. And, but for you, you're numb to that, Right. But if you started there, it would be like, whoa, I would never do this. Never see myself there. And just like with the wolf, you get numb to a point where there's no return. Wow. That, that's a lot to think about. But I do think it's an interesting visual for us to implement into our lives and really reflect what in your life have you been maybe numb to be f- that what in your life has had some consequences that you are now numb to and have not even realized that those consequences are really affecting you in a negative way. Well, you think about even when it comes to like marriage, for example, you know, certain habits in marriage that are unhealthy, there's an origin to it. You begin it and you know it's not right. And it could be an absence of something too, like not doing your date night or not having sex on a regular basis, right? And so with that, you know, that becomes a, a behavior that's not there and it's missing. And after a while, you become numb to that. Like, no, we don't need that. No, we don't need to go out. No, it's okay. We'll skip out. Right. And so it could be even a behavior that is absent that needs to be there, or it could be a, a behavior that you are doing that is negative as well. Thank you, wolves and blood popsicles and Eskimos. This will be sponsored by Blood Popsicle, Eskimos.com. <laughs> Now back to the show. Okay, so this is something that we've actually been working on as a family is having margins, right? Learning to work within the margins, allowing for interruptions to happen or failures to happen because this is when we are going to let um, our inner self, our inner mind and mentality widen because we're allowing ourselves to work out these muscles of disappointments. And that's when we can remind ourselves that we need to be patient and not urgent. And that's again, back to the process, not just getting to the end result. And I, I see this, we homeschool, they do like a hybrid. So they're with me three days a week. And my son just wants to get his work done. I want to get it done. I want to get it done. And I'm like, I love literature and stuff. So I'm like, no, it's about the learning. Let's do the process. But we all have that in us. We just want to get to the end result. So allow for their th- to be things that are going to interrupt maybe your expectations. And I think that's a huge thing for perfectionism. Like we had mentioned earlier is when things don't go your way or not what you expected because something came in or you failed, you know, just to allow that. Well, I think about 
a lot of people who have perfectionist mentality, the fear of failure, right? You don't have a lot of margins to work with. You're narrowing down your, you know, the width of the lane that you're, that you're driving in. I think about this with our kids. I took them bowling, just me and the kiddos as you know. Yeah. And so when we first started bowling, they were so delicate rolling down <laughs> that, that, uh, you know, the lane, just because they just were so concerned about the gutter, you know? And then in the middle of our game, I realized, oh, I could press the gutter button on the screen or the bumpers and the bumpers, bumpers go yeah. up and the bumpers go up and they all cheer. Yay. And they grabbed that ball and they threw as hard as they can. <laughs> and they went all out with effort and they go all out with their energy and they go all out. And guess what? They didn't even need the bumpers. <laughs> they never like hit the rarely hit the bumpers. Right. And so what happened mentally in their mind, they removed this fear of failure. They removed that fear of failure. Really, by doing that, they widened their margins of, of what they felt like they could play with, right? And then they just let the body go. They trust themselves to just throw it and chuck it, and they never needed the bumper. And it just minds me where whatever your mind is on, whatever your eyes is on, right? Like it's like driving where your eyes go, your car go, where your eyes go, your body go, right? And so their mind was, yeah, so where their eyes was on the gutter, right? It's a distraction, and they threw the ball in the gutter, and then the bumpers came up. And they no longer look to the side. They looked at they look the pins. Ahead. And that's what happens. But the energy change. And I think that's what happens, right, when you're able to give yourself, once again, permission to work with margins. Well, and you basically just said it's perspective. That's what I learned from what you just, that story. 100%. The perspective of where you're looking, you know. And guess what? They could have hit the bumper and, and failed still. But. It's so interesting because they weren't looking at that anymore. They were looking at the pins. But see, the, this is a great analogy just of life, right? Some people have a bumper brain, which is when they hit it, they bounce back. And, they, yeah. and then they smile and they that. cheer no matter what the results are, right? Yeah. And I think also, you know, some people have gutter brains, and which is the aspect of the ball hit, goes to the side and it's just, oh, wah, wah, Well, and even wah. if it hit the bumper, it's like, well, it would have been out anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, the, mm-hmm. it's just that negative thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a great way to, I think, segue to... Really, this last point I want to bring up, which is the concept of perception, right, you're talking about, is I believe to overcome perfectionism, your why has to be greater than your what. And people have a perfectionist mindset, even like with OCD, their mindset is stuck on the what. What should I have done? Mm. What could I have done better? What could I have gotten? What I need to do? They're always thinking about the deficit of what's missing. The performance. Yeah, they're just thinking about the deficit of what's mm, missing what in their they, yeah, performance, okay, right? Yeah. And so they're always constant versus the abundance, right? The opportunities to find what was what was good. So give us right? some whys then. Well, so you know, why for example, behind. right? So you know, sometimes it has to do with you know your whys, like okay. So for example, let's say work. You know, I, you know, I had a busy week of clients this, this last week and working ten hour days. If I if I get stuck on the what. Right, just thinking about how the amount of hours spent, sitting down, talking, connecting, relating, right? That's gonna be exhausting. That's gonna be anxiety provoking. But if I focus on the why, what's my why? I enjoy giving life to others. I enjoy seeing people succeed. I enjoy the opportunity to work. I like the fact as I'm able to go and provide for my family, that this is going to give us opportunities for us to do things in the future because I'm going to work a little harder this week. That's my why. When I focus on the why, think about this when it comes to, you know, they find about, about diet. A lot of people go on diets and just doesn't go anywhere, right? And a lot of things about diets, they say, hey, we want you to write down, you know, a food journal. Or everything you're, you're, you're eating, right? And what happens, a lot of people bring out because they're so focused on, on the what, what they need to do, what they can eat, what they cannot eat, right? If you flip that and start having a mindset of your why, why do I do this? I'm doing this because I want to have a legacy with my kids longer than age 60. I do this because my wife's going to have heart disease in my family. I need to start running every day. I'm doing this because the fact is, is I could barely get out of the pool when I was in uh, Hawaii and I was like <laughs> struggling just to get out. Right. Just so help. Yes. Instead of like wanting. But a, that's the why. Right. Like the why the has. God, it's, it's I want to be healthy. Yeah. The why is going to be is, is going to sustain behavior. A lot of people have a hard time sustaining sustaining behavior. Right. Oh, I, mean, I love consistent that. Behavior. The why is going to sustain behavior. Right. And so that's where you're focused. People who can't sustain it, a lot of times are focused on too much. It's kind of like 
with athletes, a lot of athletes burn out because they get so focused on, I had to work out twice, I have two a day, so I have to work out twice a day. I'm spending five to six hours a day away from my friends and, and not, you know, and, and, and this, instead I'm doing, you know, sport, that kind of stuff versus the why. The why is because I enjoy this is good for me. I like being part of a locker room. I like enjoying the teammates. I like the fact this gives me opportunities in the future, possibly maybe getting a scholarship or things like that, right? And so a lot of times, right, going back to perfectionism, perfectionist people are focused so much on the what. What was the result? What I need to do? What I could have done better? And they could find their why. And this is what we do, right, with our with our coaching Right. And, and with our, even with our, the therapy that I do is try and find that why for people. People get stuck on the what because it's something they have control of. Right. And control so, again. right. And a lot of the what is about stuff that they feel they have control of, while the why, once they again, do. Right. And why, once again, is more about the existential self. Like, what is the greater sense? What is, what is big? Why, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because of this. Right. And that because statement really nails down opportunities for change, motivation, consistency, sustainability. And something we talk about all the time is you cannot think of two things at once. So you're going to either think of the what or you're going to think of the why. That is. So let's. That's exactly right. So let's think of the why, right? Because also perfectionism. I hate to say this, but it is a choice. And now that we've gone through all these things, we really hope that you can see some things in yourself that maybe you've just been aiming in the wrong direction and that you can start talking to yourself differently and you can grow and learn to work in these margins and learn to fail and still know that, you know, you it's going to be okay. Like we are, we're proud of you for even just listening to this. We hope that we gave you some great tools. Remember that we don't lose. We learn, remember to trust more and let's go forward choosing to not be perfect anymore. Okay. Okay. So we also want to tell you that we have free resources for you on perfectionism. So if you're interested in that or interested in coaching, we want you to go to our website, theresetgroup.com for all of that information. And we can't wait to see you next time. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. For more information and other resources, visit us at theresetgroup.com and make sure to follow us at The Reset Group on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.